Are there um, specific firms that you prefer to write for, or can you just um, does the does the inspiration just come when you when you hear the story? I mean, I I think anything where I can love the thing I'm attempting to build, it works for me. I mean, I had a very, I just had a very, uh, I had three projects in a row leading to what I'm on now that were all very different. My brother and I worked on this animated film called My Father's Dragon. Oh, for yeah, Nora, yeah. For Nora Toomey, who's an amazingly gifted Irish filmmaker and her company Cartoon Saloon over there with Tom Moore, they make amazing movies. That was a very colorful, whimsical, fantastical adventure film. And then I went from that to doing this thing called Cabinet of Curiosities for Guillermo del Toro. And that was scary, nasty horror music. And that was being trapped underground with a giant rat. And it oh, was okay. like, it was a whole <laughs> other world from what I just finished. But that made it fun to switch gears so abruptly. And mm -hmm. then I went into season two of Julia, which is the HBO Max show that, that I do the music for. And that's a period piece. Uh, this season two is set in 1961, I think, 61, 62. And so there's those colors and that thing. And that's quite a light and fun show with a few deep moments, but very tuneful, very theme driven. Um, so just right there, those three, I mean, I loved working on all three of those things, but they all asked me to do something really different. And I think the thing that I liked about all of them was I just got to build in the musicality I wanted to and, the, and, and try to make it as original as possible. So no, I think the only things I haven't really liked as much were things where the musicality was asked to be diminished for whatever reasons in the name of the film. Because mm -hmm. there is some scores where they're more sound designy and tonal, you know, sort of just mm -hmm. murky. And that, that's not my favorite thing. And I don't usually get asked to do that. I, don't, I haven't done that much of it. And mostly I do the most musical thing I can find. Well, I'm I'm just thinking already I would, I, I cannot imagine where do you start when you just see the film and the story. And now you're talking about working on three projects together. Right. This is amazing. Right. Well, there's one, fortunately there wasn't too much overlap. There was one after the other, but sometimes we do get overlap. Uh, you just learn after a while, to, you just, you know, you shift gears yeah. and off you go. And, um, you know, there's a lot of pressure to, to, you have to make those people happy or they're not going to come yeah. to you. So as artists, we're, you know, we're client beholden, like an architect or anybody who, who is creating something for someone else. Do you, um, can you see that you have this specific style and that, that it overlaps or that, that you can identify in all these films that you can identify that it's you? Well, that's hard for me to necessarily tell. I mean, I hear me in it because I did it. What's yeah. that saying? Sometimes it's hard to know what a building looks like when you're inside of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I'm told that there's a sound that is, you know, mine and people can recognize it. Um, from film to film. I certainly sense my set of aesthetics traveling from film to film, which is, as I'd said, to try and be different um, with the kind of colors I use and to try and be memorable with the tunes and that kind of thing. Those are things I try and do each time. I hope I, I manage to do that, but uh, you'd probably be better at telling me than me as to whether you heard a through line through things, because oh, from inside yeah. of the process, I, it does, I feel, obviously the through line to everything because it, it came from me in some way. And this animation film that you did, um, how does that process work? Do you do they uh, finish the whole film or do, are you also then part of the, the process before the film is finished? Animation is a little bit different than live action in that, in that very way, um, that you can be in there early. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes when it's still in the animatic form, uh, an animatic is basically a series of storyboards strung together with temporary dialogue. Let's the filmmakers see what kind of a film they're making before they commit to animating and while they're still working on things like character design. So sometimes um, there'll be something where you need to get in there and if the characters are going to, for example, in My Father's Dragon, the Boris and Elmer whistle this tune to each other. 
they have a little friendship whistle and they whistle it back and forth to each other. And sometimes they trade phrases off. So my brother and I had to come up with that whistle tune a year before we started working on it because they were going to animate the characters whistling this tune. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So we had to do that first. Um, or if there's a scene where that we, there's another film we did for Nora called the breadwinner where there was a little bit of drumming going on, the characters playing some drums and just a couple of shots of that. And she wanted the drums done first so that they could animate to the drums. So um, sometimes you're in there quite early with animation, mm. you know, which tends to have music really tightly locked into picture, which is a lot of fun, but a lot of work. And then, mm. um, then you'll wait, you'll do that preliminary work and then there might be a gap in the case of my father's dragon, it was a year. Then they came and they had the film, you know, mostly edited, but still every pass of the edit we get in an animation film, they fill the animation in a bit more, okay. especially in a CG film. My father's dragon was, was hand-drawn. It's a beautiful thing. But working on a Pixar movie, for example, they're going to be sending you versions as you go every usually two weeks or so. And each time the film shows up, there'll be a little more stuff in there to see. And you'll, you know, because sometimes you're working to pretty rough con visual concepts because they're still working on it, but time is running out and you have to start writing. 